This is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a YouTube video about implant dentistry. During this presentation, we'll be using some tools to show how to plan a molar implant. And this is going to show us uh, some of the things we should be looking at prior to placing the implant. So we're going to be using a Smart Fusion model which is a blend of the Nobel Clinician and the Nobel Procedure software. So the first thing we do is to map out the nerve, which we're not going to show you how to do there on this particular case, but you can see when we look at the nerve, we can see the mental foramen very well. We want to isolate this nerve and map it out prior to implant placement so we can see where this is. This is our number one structure that we want to stay away from. During this presentation, we're going to use Smart Fusion technology to have a look at things. So Smart Fusion technology is a blend of a model that's actually scanned into the computer in the Nopel Procedure software, and then also a wax up, which you can see in red here, and they're fused into a CT. So when we put all this together, we can actually see the soft tissue thickness here. So the white line down to the bone, the white line down to the bone. So we see that the lingual is actually quite a bit thicker than the buccal aspect here with soft tissues. Now from bone anatomy, we can see a very thin knife edge bone on the buccal. And then on the lingual, we can see it's much thicker here, much more cortical bone. So we would expect when something is extracted here, the tooth gets extracted, the bone's gonna heal in a different way. So we have to take this into consideration when we're planning our implant. The neat thing about this software is we can angle it to the root and then move back into the area that we're gonna place the implant. And this will allow us to have a cross-sectional view of where we want the crown to be. Also, the soft tissue thickness on the buccal aspect versus the soft tissue thickness on the lingual. We can see it's a lot more tissue on the lingual in this case. So we're going to place an implant, so we'll choose a ridge position, pick the two spots, and then this is going to allow us to pick an implant instantly. So we're going to pick a noble active. Soon the 5.5 will be available, but we're going to be using on the diagram today the 5.0. So you can see here, we'll place the implant into the bone and have a cross-sectional view by clipping it back. And this will first off is, uh, show us one of the problems that we have to be avoiding is this uh, ridge undercut. So there's a very thick bony plate, so we don't want to hit into that thick bony aspect, but also we don't want to drill through this bony plate and then be perforating underneath the tongue. The software gives us a real good look at what's going on here relative to position of the implant to the tooth. So we just moved it a little bit here at the apex. We can get this so it's coming out the fossa on the uh, wax up of the crown. So we can also look at a few other things. We'll rotate around the implant, which will allow us to see how close we are to the adjacent root. So this is too far, which would cause an emergence profile problem. So we want to kind of snuggle this into the root to make sure that we're in a good position relative to the final emergence of the crown. Since this is going to be a molar, we have to go a little bit uh, more distal than the 1.5 millimeters to the root because of tissue emergence and crown emergence. And so we want to make this ideal. If we look at soft tissue gasket, we want to have at least 2.5 millimeters of soft tissue around the top of the implant, and this is going to be shown to preserve bone based on literature. So we can see here, if we look at prosthetic space, we have 10.8 millimeters of prosthetic space, which is ideal, and we're going to know that we have enough uh, space to make this crown nice and strong. We also can look at the incision line. I can see this, the thickness of the tissue is such a, a great tissue thickness here. We want to bring this tissue to the facial and increase our thickness out there. So we don't want to punch here. Lastly, we'll look at the distance to the nerve. It's 3.7 millimeters. So we have lots of space here. We can plan this and do the surgery with uh, relative ease. But this is something we want to isolate and make sure we know where this position of the nerve is. One of the biggest troubles that clinicians have when doing a standard type of guide is that they don't know the bone width based on the x-ray. So the bone width is always critical for us to understand. And we can see here we have lots of bone. So we can see from one red arrow to the other red arrow, 
there's more than two millimeters of bone space here so we've got a nice case here but this enables you to see the relative thickness and uh, the height of the bone and the prosthetic space so we can use all these tools then to create what's the uh, emer ideal emergence profile so the ideal emergence profile can be shown just by outlining where the final crown is going to be we can use a line and just kind of mark this and show the emergence profile and see if we put the implant in the right position we're not going to have a food trap because some people will find that if they don't get the implant in the right position they're going to kind of have a big triangle around the implant which is going to cause a food trap so sometimes what I'll do just in teaching students and teaching other dentists is to show the emergence profile which is also going to help preserve bone so you can see here if we go buccolingually and also trace the crown out we get kind of an idea about the ideal emergence profile which is going to give us the depth and the angulation of this particular implant so if we're not deep enough it's going to show on this particular emergence so if I turn off the model now you can start to see the emergence profile relative to the final wax up and this will show you what your abutment's going to kind of look like so you can imagine if this was all gold it would be quite a big structure so that's why I'm leaning towards things like the ASC abutment which are a titanium adapter with a zirconia type of crown on top of it but you can see the emergence here is going to help to preserve the soft tissues and also make it so that you're not going to trap food in around here so you can see when you put the soft tissues back on you'll notice that the emergence profile is making an ideal contact here which is what we want to do when we're planning our implant placement what you'll notice from this particular view is that the buckle is kind of tapering off and this is quite typical with the two roots being out in the buckle aspect and the bone being a little bit more knife edge so we have to make sure we bring some of the tissue from the lingual out to the buckle to kind of beef this area up to make sure that it has that soft tissue seal that acts like a gasket around the implant which kind of folds into the platform shift of this type of implant so you can see here that if the implant is too shallow then what happens is this is going to change the emergence profile and create a food trap because the emergence is going to kind of have to come out too fast and uh, this will typically make it so that it's not going to be the same shape as the adjacent tooth and so if it's not the same shape it's going to have this bigger triangle and this triangle is going to lock food in there and uh, bacteria and cause uh, soft tissue problems and not be able to seal it properly so we don't want the, the implant too shallow so we don't want to go too deep because of the nerve we don't want to go too shallow but we don't want to go too distal so if we go too distal the same type of emergence problem happens because we get this uh, triangle that happens in the anterior aspect so food is going to trap in here and be a real nuisance for the patient to summarize the smart fusion model system shows you a lot of things first we can see the nerve and the relative position of the implant to the nerve which is, is critical to me number two we can also see how thick the soft tissues are above the implant you can see here it's showing about 4.1 on this model we can see where the final wax up is going to be so this is going to show us where the angulation and depth of the implant should be to create the ideal emergence profile also to have the adequate prosthetic space we can also see where the incision line should be based on the soft tissues because we can pull that tissue out to the buccal aspect and make that ideal then we can also see the bone width the bone width is very ideal in this case and lastly we can see the thick cortical plate and the uh, opportunity for perforation if we pick an implant too long here so all these things together give us a very valuable look and a very interesting look prior to even picking up the scalpel and this is a very useful technology to try out so I urge you to give it a try lastly if you wanted to make a surgical guide based on this a stereolithic guide can be fabricated and then sent back to you so that you can put this implant in the exact position you chose during the planning. This is Dr. Scott McLean and this has been a YouTube video about implant dentistry.